Hi. How's everything going? It's good. Rock and roll. Okay. Well, this is the first time I've been here, and this is super, super cool. So I don't know how many of you have been here a bunch or, you know, if, if you've contributed to it as both a member of the community or people who are running stuff here or taking creepy pictures. Um, it's, it's awesome. Like I, I kind of fucked up by not coming earlier. <laughs> uh, but now I know. So, uh, please like, thank you and thank everyone for putting this on. Yeah. Thank you. Blake. <laughs> uh, I mean that though. It's, it's, it's super cool. I would, I'm, I'm definitely going to plan to come back and I want to go play CTF someday. Cause I never get to do that. Uh, <laughs> you're like, all right, see you later. Oh, nice. I get bought off already. This is working out well. Okay. Uh, that's me in various different formats. Uh, my disclaimer is that I treat most conferences like I'm talking honestly. So if I swear or offend you or whatever else, I don't care. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just, there's no point in getting words in the way. Um, I'm an American, so I have unique views of things. Um, we have our own special way of seeing the world. I, uh, I married a Canadian, so I know my place in the world. Uh, <laughs> he looks so happy. Uh, that's my lineage of doing work stuff and security. I've been doing security shit for, I don't know, 20 or so years. Um, everywhere from defending companies to defending and architecting big global enterprises uh, at Sprint, running the inner tubes, uh, working for Satan, AKG, KPMG. <laughs> that was, didn't last real long, but, you know, whatever. Hail Satan. Um Worked for a big distributor, making them rich, which was interesting because they wanted to, you know, distribute all of our services like testing and whatever else, uh, just like they would distribute a firewall. So there's, you know, 3000 bars peddling their shit. And part of that shit was our pen testing and some of our other services. And then I just started my own thing. because I was sick of making everybody else rich and I wanted to see how much I could work for a living. So it's, it's where I'm at. Uh, I'm known for doing red teaming. I don't know how that says that, but it was red and it sounded funny. Uh, I've, I've, I've worked a lot in the industry to try and change how pen testing and stuff has been done. Um, so I don't know if any of you have ever seen P-Test, not like the stuff you get afraid of at work, but this is the one. <laughs> uh, this is the one that probably should make bad testers afraid of work. My company does all sorts of things. We do code review uh, and, and help developers learn things. We do incident response. Uh, we do some risk assessment work. Uh, we do lots of physical security and kind of integrated testing. Uh, we also do some social engineering. Um, yeah, she, imagined, she she just looked at me. She's like, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that, that was that was the. You ever do that? I'll fucking eat your eat your heart. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So. Um, the reason I decided I was going to start giving this talk is because all of the stuff I've been doing in pen testing, and this is hard for me to really say, all the stuff I've been doing in pen testing has kind of hurt some of the clients that I've been doing it for. Uh, there, There's this kind of bar that you go into an environment and they don't know what they don't know. And then you go in and they ask you, like, I want the roughest, nastiest ass kicking. So you give it to them and you find all these problems. And then you tell them, hey, here's how you could fix all of these problems, right? And they go, cool, well, I could fix two out of the 700 things that you just showed me. And the rest of the stuff, like, huh, no, sorry, just can't change my endpoint protection strategy because it sucks. Like, got to eventually get there. And so you're left with sort of all this debt. and. I got a project to, to sort of build an internal testing team. And at the same time, I was faced with this problem of, I don't want to build a team internally that all we do is cause debt. All we do is find new shit that's vulnerable or new shit that we can exploit 
or new ways to make them feel shitty at nights so that they can't sleep on the weekends. They wake up and then they're pissed on Monday. And then I find more stuff and I'm like, ha, ah, you still can't sleep. <laughs> you know, like I, I just felt like that would be a horrible day in and day out experience. And, and we had to kind of challenge what was going to go on. And, and frankly, I just looked at the rest of my career and was like, wow, I have been fucking up for a really long time. I've been just doing this thing where all I'm doing is showing people negative stuff and it's not necessarily helping. I thought it was going to help. I really did. It was the best intention. Um, so you had to kind of get down with like what the problems were, right? Well, the problems were, were pretty easy to, to determine. We had limited metrics. We had all this debt that we were incurring for them. We have, you know, nothing really looks like an attack. We're using like commercial tools, which attackers don't use. So all of these things we're training them for, while we might give them some similarities to what an attack looks like, we're really just building them to be better against us. And since I'm not going to ever attack them, and if I do, I'm going to try way harder. But, but, if, but if I'm ever going to attack them, then fine. But since I'm never going to, like, what am I building their defenses for? So it was, it was, it was kind of hard. I, I felt like we've been doing it wrong the whole time. <laughs> If I could do that, I would not be a pen tester. <laughs> like, fact. I would just be like, CEO, mm -mm, watch this. Boop. <laughs> yeah, I would get paid. Um, so, so we wanted to figure out sort of where the whole power came from in an organization to, to feel like they were making change, to feel like they were making progress, to feel not scared of the bad guys and want the bad guys to get, you know, come bring it on. And, and the best I could think of... Uh, in, in all of my time of doing that was that instead of treating the offense prima donnas like they're awesome, which, you know, they're there to just simulate things. So we're kind of like a vibrator. Uh, apparently less easy to hack. But but maybe maybe we need to start, you know, getting down with the defenders and figuring out how do we make them the baddest motherfucker in the room? And if I can show all sorts of ways to attack things and I can emulate all these different adversaries, then they should be like one of the baddest motherfuckers out there. They should be so good at fighting because I can change up my Kung Fu to ninjutsu to all this other stuff. They should just be able to wax anyone that comes in the door. And at that point, after we've sparred so many times and they've had so many of these different things go on, they should be like, come bring the thing. Like I am ready today. I didn't even eat breakfast because I'm ready to start kicking ass. And that's, that's what I want. That's what I wanted. So, you know, how do we, how do we build them into like the baddest starfighter ever? Well, when I looked at it, the first thing I thought was, how do those pilots get built? They get built by extreme amounts of proficiency testing, right? You don't just roll up and jump in an F-35 and start like zapping bad guys. There is a lot, there's a big bar to entry to get in there. Right. Not only do you have to do some ground school first and then have a whole bunch of partner flights, which we've already surpassed the amount of time and effort spent on hanging with the offenders, like just at bullet one before they even jumped in the airplane. Like we've never been able to get that far. Then you have pre-flight school. So imagine before you're actually allowed to start using the defensive tools that are live in the organization, you got to have six weeks of banging books and doing simulations and running things just like it would be in the real world, but you're not allowed to go to prod yet. Way, we're at 10 times the amount of training our defenders get. Then you have all sorts of different levels of school. You have your basic school, your intermediary school, you have advanced school. Then once you've completed advanced school and you've shown basic proficiency across the weapon systems that you're supposed to control, you get married to a part of the weapon systems that now become an extension of you. The stuff that you're really good at, the stuff that you excel and you're passionate at, you now get to dig into that and become one of the baddest people on earth in that weapon system. Right? So from then, you get 100 to 500 hours before you say, okay, we're going to send you up on your own and go let you whack some bad guys. Like, does any of that sound reasonable? Like, like wouldn't, do you think we would be better if our defenders were trained with that level of acumen? Right. But I mean, seriously. And, and so it, it was like hurting my heart because I'm like, Fuck, we're not doing anything about this. 
And then I, I can't even get into the fact that the yearly quals of 250 hours of simulated time where they're not in a battle, but they're going through the deepest, darkest shit that you could do in an airplane. That's the stuff that we'd be really good at. That's the stuff where it's, you know, APT 1096 and you're just, you're, you've had to learn Mandarin so you could talk more shit to them because it felt so good, you know, to do it. And I, like, those are the things I want to see on the budget, like must take level six Mandarin course. Cause like, LOL, <laughs> you know, like, yeah, like that's, that would make my heart cry. But when, when I looked at those things and I thought about simulation, there's a lot of benefits to it, right? And the biggest benefit is safety. Biggest benefit is that I don't have to worry about my prod systems going crazy because you're trying to do some like one time in a million ninja kickflip, stop the guy thing. Like you have a complete competency and awareness in the systems and you're ready to use them at will. And in the event that something really strange is happening, most likely you've already qualified against that stuff and you've had one or two simulations where the weird thing has happened or something like the weird thing has happened. It's not just the first time. We're already 50% of the way there every time we get there. So I really don't want to be in this situation where we take our defenders, if they're pilots, we put them into an airplane, we launch them up into the air and we go, hey, check this out. So a whole bunch of really, really good aircraft gunners are going to be on the ground shooting at you. Don't die. Ready? And they're like, I mean, because because the defenders are down. That's what their job is. They're like, OK, I'm ready. But we don't need to put them at level of risk, right? Like we could put them in a simulator and shoot at them and they could go down 50 times and they can get really pissed. They could leave, drink a bottle of bourbon, come back all hammered. And be like, I'll fuck these people up. And, and, and there's zero risk. I mean, except for maybe screwing up the flight simulator which that's okay. So to me, I think that, you know, the idea that, that offense can win some stuff, but really, really good defense is what keeps you in business is, is where I wanted to go with this. So we got put on a project to go create some teams that actually did this. Cause they were like, you know, I instantly get my fucking bullshit called on me. They're like, Oh yeah, that sounds really good in theory. Here's a project. Go build it. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> so, I saw this graphic today and I thought it was the best way that I've ever seen the word pen test visualized. Um, it was just so beautiful. It's so good. And, and so I, you know, I made the joke at lunch. I'm like, just, just, if you want a pen test, like just point to where you want the bad man to touch you <laughs> and I'll touch the shit out of you right there. But that's, that's sort of what, what we want to do. And I, and I don't want to take this lame ass pen testing approach of like, Oh sure. It's easy. You just hire people who do hacker shit and then like let them hack shit. And then they'll fill out some half-assed report because they can't necessarily communicate what they did into business terms. And then if we have the advanced guys do it, like we'll bill some extra time because they'll hang out with the defense people. And every time they get a shell, they'll text each other. And then the defense guy will stand up and go, ha ha, they got you again. You still suck. And the defense people were like, fuck, really? Like, where are they coming from? Can't tell you. You got to find it. Tick tock. You know, it's just, it, it just, it seems like that whole thing fractures teams. So I want to kind of remove that and start somewhere new. Um, vulnerability monkeys, get it. Pen testers, kind of vulnerability plus auto pwn, get it. Red teamers, I can't even go there because it pisses me off because people are like, I do red teaming. And you're like, what do you do? They're like, they say the word metasploit, and I'm like, I gotta go home. Uh, I'm like, sorry, that's that's you can't. Uh, have you picked the lock? No. Okay, well, let's maybe go back to pen tester. Um, purple teaming, I think, at this point is so ridiculous because we are caught in the color wheel that there is no possible way an executive or management staff could keep us even remotely in the realm of adults because all we do is speak in crayon terms. Like, if you want to know why we're treated like retards, it's because we talk like retards. <laughs> so I'll give them more syllables and call it adversarial engineer, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to actually simulate something using engineering, not using magic, not using tricks. We're trying to simulate the same thing over and over in a repeatable manner. 
Because if we can do that, then we can contextually get some scoring against it and we can make prediction happen in the future, right? So I would much rather know what's going to hit me in the future than what like script worked today. Um, I hate Lockheed. I'm just putting this up there to explain how much I hate Lockheed. Um, yeah, I mean, whatever, rob the government. Um, I like them for that part, oddly enough, but the other stuff is not worth it. But when they take the little kill chain thing, the part that I enjoy about it is that they're breaking it up into segments. What you call those segments, I don't know. At the same time, this, this defense side of theirs, please, someone who has some good language skills, please reword this. Please, please reword this. We're back to being treated like we're six years old because we're like, detect it. Okay, got it. Seems reasonable. Deny it. Well, if we could fucking deny it, we wouldn't have to do the rest of this shit. That would, it would be done. It would be denied. We would wash your hands. You're freaking done. Like, so those don't make sense. And then disrupt it. Okay, well, if I know enough to disrupt it, why didn't I stop it? And then degrade it. You're like, what am I going to rank on it and call it shitty names? You know, like, ooh, you're a dirty little exploit. You're like, what? What? Now I have to deceive it. Like, not only am I degrading it and calling it names, I have to, like, wear a clown suit and be like, look at me. Like, this is so ridiculous. So I beg you to please try and, try and retool that. But the minor guys have done a pretty good job at being able to start taking tactics that were used in various different types of exercises, different types of campaigns, and break them down into categories. Anybody seen this, the MITRE ATT&CK framework? Yeah, it's good shit, huh? Very cool. So one of the things that we're trying to look at is maybe instead of doing testing, maybe we do simulations. Maybe we say, here's every single thing that could happen in a flight. Here's all the different phases of things that could happen in a flight. Here's the bad shit that could go on. Here's the good stuff that can happen. Let's grade ourselves on every single one of these unit testing style so that in the event that we had all of these grades, we could run simulations against every piece of it and I could predict the future of attack without ever running an attack. Anyone want that? We'll get there. See? Bam! Slide clairvoyance. Uh, I need like a Ron Popeil, but like, oh wait. Okay. So when you're building an internal team like this, you have to do a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of legwork before you could just like jump into the dirty stuff. It's way before foreplay. It's like the, you know, high five and cute glance across the bar. Um, you need one, a problem statement. You need to figure out what are the problems as this team are we really trying to solve? What are we trying to address? What are the things that we need to get out of this? We can't just jump in and go, oh, somebody showed me a sheet. Let's go fuck shit up and do it that way. Right? You have to tailor it for the company and what the company's doing. Ours, ours was to validate detection, prevention, and response against every single possible known attack type that we could ever replicate. Big job. You know what? Good. Keeps us employed. And, and we're not going to sit there and do the same thing over and over again. Part of the part that, that I hated in the beginning of this when thinking about having a testing team was that that testing team was going to go root stuff in environments the same way every single time. And then they would get burnout because they'd be like, okay, I'm really, really sick of going into this place that has shared admin passwords, passing it around waiting to like use crack map to mass Mimikatz things, like looking for the DA password, like high-fiving myself to the DA password at like 10.30 after I started at 8, and then like walking home in disgust that I had to be there for two more days because I'm now going to not do anything. You know, I want people to constantly be involved, and I want the tester skill to evolve and evolve, and I want the defender skills to evolve. So we had to get away from that repetitive type testing and get to a point where we could really classify different things. Right? All of those things are to get the metrics. We get the metrics so that we can predict the future. Because with the right information across all of these, 
you could start to predict the attack paths that are likely to work. Because all I'd have to do is go back to this little chart and be like, okay, connect the red things. And if I get to an area where it's green and yellow, then go to the yellow things and figure out which one is probably the least likely to get attacked or stopped. And then go back to red things and bam, I'm done. I know exactly how my chain's going to work. Right? Two, once we have a charter and we have some ideas of what questions we're going to answer, how are we going to take the work in? You're not going to just be able to go out and test anything in an environment. I mean, those of you who work for really big companies, you probably can't test anything. <laughs> and we have to start with, you know, some community messaging. Some, here's what we do. Here's how we do it. Here's where we're going to do it. N no, we're not just a bunch of hackers who come in and fuck stuff up and leave. I know that's how the other people did it. We're different, right? We're here to build institutional knowledge and share that with you so that everyone gets to grow from it. So if we're going to bring stuff in, maybe as a red teamer, you were at a conference and you saw some cool new technique. Great. That goes into our bucket list. We want to be able to test those things so we can simulate against them. Maybe the management says, hey, I heard there was this new, you know, fuzzy bear attack. And old fuzzy bear did this and this and this to a company that's super similar to ours. And then we go read what Fuzzy Bear does and we pull the TTPs and all of the things out of Fuzzy Bear and we see that we've tested like 10 of those different TTPs before. Two of them we've never tested. So those are things that we have to iterate real quick. But we iterate those things and then we go back to the management and say, hey, look, I looked at all of the ways that they move around and they do their work. Here's the probability of them gaining success and I never have to test anything else. Because I already know those things. We've already tested them. We've already figured out how we protect, how we detect, and how we respond to it. And if they want to get better at it because they're extra scared of Fuzzy Bear, then we tell them exactly how that can work because we've already modeled it. Does that make sense? Awesome. All right. Once you're able to get an ingest work, you obviously have to show them that there's a methodology to do this. It makes people more comfortable when you're like, hey, I'm going to touch your oil rig in the middle of the ocean. And somebody's like, no, you're not going to because you're going to kill all the dolphins. And then you're like, but I have a process. And then they're like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really works. Um, doesn't um, Disclaimer, doesn't always work in the real world, just like everything else. Um, but it helps, it helps get it out there that there's a level of standardization, right? One of the big things that we found is not only were we trying to break these TTPs down and be able to metricize all of the different pieces of the attack chains that we had, but internalizing and institutionalizing knowledge was something that was really important. Uh, there's a lot of turnover in our field. There's a lot of people who are like too hipster, too cool to be schooled, and they're like, I'm out. I'm going to go get paid more. And so the knowledge leaves with them, and the entire company is harmed by that. And, and I don't care about them getting retained or not. I just care that the company, what we set out as a mission to do together, continues to grow. So part of the things that we need to do when we're doing those is we need to track exactly how we did the test. And if there's a, if there's a particular technique that we used, we need to write an entire wiki document, including the scripts that we use, the functions that we had, the sets that we had, the levels of success the different types of code we wrote it in, and then a step-by-step, -step, what are the references we had so that if they leave and we want to come back to that one control, we know how to replay it exactly the way that was on that day. If new techniques have come out since then, then great. We get to add more techniques to that same wiki page, right? Or whatever you're going to use, Confluence, et cetera. All right, we're going to enter those. We're going to have our own database of how those TTPs work. We're going to be able to give those to other people. And then at that point, the blue team might start actually having some fun with us. They might say, hey, there's a project that I want to do. All right, awesome. Well, we bought this new APT Pro 5000 and it's supposed to stop everything. And we would like to know if it stops everything. And you're like, okay, well, can we window that down a little bit? And they're like, sure. And then you tell them, well, we have a schedule for next week. We have some openings. And they're like, well, we'd like to test it today. They're like, cool, we'll go into the wiki and find one of the test systems, put all your logging and analysis shit on it, put the old APT Pro 5000 in front of the thing, and just have a way. Go for it. Remember to revert to snapshot, because you will fuck stuff up. 
And they will. And probably before we even start to conduct our test, they will throw said APT5000 out, realizing that it no longer works. Voila. We just made huge improvements in the environment. We saved them a ton of money and we gave them extra confidence in their controls and systems without ever touching it. All right. Needs to be repeatable. The wheel of death. Um, so this kind of standard pen testy flow. So we're going to get Intel gathering. We're going to do vulnerability assessment. We're going to acquire a target, exploit it, privesque, lateral, et cetera, et cetera, right? The whole time, the blue team is going to be doing their thing. Once we get to a point of findings, maybe finding one is I could ping the host. Finding two might be that I could nmap it and get ports open. Finding three might be that I could figure out that one target was better than another target. Finding four might be that I could pop it and get a shell or whatever else and get some type, of, uh, some type of C2 or move laterally. But every time we do one of those techniques, we're no longer going to produce a report that's a big linear report. We're going to open a ticket for every single thing that we did, and we're going to individually put those into a new project where it's going to be, today is ping day. I am pinging the host. Did you see it? Okay, I'm doing it again. Did you see it? All right, I'm doing it again. You blocking it? Let's block it. Okay, I'm doing it again. And continue on and on and on doing those types of tests until by the time we get to the end, we're not handing them a document. We're measuring the progress from the day that we started to the day that we ended. Because every time we end a project, we've fundamentally changed the level of protection on all of the devices that were in line. We don't need a paper to block us anymore. It's actually changed already. Right? We have tons of examples of that. Right, being able to just do basic commands. Right, Gates wrote this script because uh, we were talking about this in Brucon that just says, "Okay, here's a whole bunch of net commands." Right, if our detection techniques are supposed to pick up all of these net commands, then then prove it. I don't want to just have blind faith, and then after I do, make sure that every single one of them has been hit, and if one of them misses, go back, run it again, and figure out why it missed. I don't know if you guys have ever seen this uh, JP cert article of the like most common attacker commands after they get a shell or after they get control of a system. It's awesome. You know, this is these are the perfect types of things that Chris was trying to do that that you guys should do to say I have more confidence in my tools working because I am able to say that if I put one in, I get X out, and if I know what that number X is, I can watch it all the time so that if something fucked up happens. You don't have to go blame your tool on saying, oh, yeah, I didn't know that the logger was down. No, you have an iteration that you run your tests, and if the test is screwed up at the end, you point back to the logger thing and you say, that's broke, and I know because my test didn't come out the way I expected. Or maybe some attacker turned off a log function, right? That's how we would detect these things, because we would have a consistent understanding of what's going on in the environment. All right, information sharing, we talked about some... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, all of them. It just depends on what you're into. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's good. Thank you. You're a scholar. So, part of part of what we're trying to do with these, there's there there are some open source ones now. I don't know if any of you have seen PwnWiki. Right, pretty good start. Uh, to doing some of this stuff. Some of the attack framework now, uh, I don't know if any of you follow it closely, but I've been working a lot with those guys, uh, obviously, because uh, I think that they do ridiculously amazing work. Um, they just opened an API to everything in attack so you can actively call it. So you can even pre-populate some of your wikis. So you could take Pwn Wiki, you can use the API and start sucking information from each one of these and start rebuilding it live. Uh, which is really, really cool. Okay. Once you have all of your foundation set up, you need to build the team and build the tools. As far as the skill sets and stuff for the people on the team, I'm not going to lead you there. You can figure out how to pick your own people because people are going to be different for every environment. What I am going to say is that if you start your team out with, we need to go buy a bunch of scanners and a bunch of tools and a bunch of this and a bunch of that. You've fucking lost and hang it up and go back to being a pen tester. 
Um, it's just not, it's just not, not how these tests are going to work, right? We want, we want to be able to have our own ability to replicate all of this stuff. Sure. If you're using, you know, Metasploit or you're using core, you're using canvas or whatever else to automate some of the TTPs, I think that's totally reasonable because automation is the way to go in all cases, but you're going to focus on things that attackers need. You're going to need hardware. You're going to need the ability to go, okay, I'm walking into this environment right now, which is a, a medical laboratory. I need to be able to understand how to virtualize the entire laboratory, every single thing in it, every single device. Because then you're going to take it and you're going to go back home and you're going to go to your lab and you're going to figure out all of the different extra TTPs that you're going to add because of all the new pieces of hardware. You're going to simulate and run every one of those. You're going to get an evaluation of what's going to be the most successful. You're going to go back in. You're going to do the thing. Right? Way different level of testing. You're going to need tons of horsepower. I mean, to, to build and virtualize those things, it takes a lot. You know, of course you want big, giant cracking rigs. They're super fun to build. They're really hilarious to watch them explode more than a Samsung phone. You know, and you could like cook breakfast on it. Um, or mine Bitcoin, whatever. But, but you'll need them. We find it an, an indisposable tool, whether we're trying to reverse something or whether we're trying to, to crack stuff to figure out what the next stage is that we're going to go. We have to emulate what these attackers have as resources. Formal collateral, we talked a little bit about. We have to be able to introduce not only the team and its capabilities, but we have to understand what the rules of engagement are. Right? The rules of engagement are not, I can come in and do what I want. That is not something that's acceptable to a boardroom. They don't want to hear that. When you are dealing with mission critical shit, you cannot just cowboy into a place. It doesn't matter how good you are at it. So we have to have some templates. We have to have some notification process. We have to have approval process. The approval process is really just to like SE them into letting you do the stuff. Be like, no, it's okay. I won't do anything bad until you approve it. And then, then you like bubble the thing up in the middle of the test. And you're like, hey, can I do this? And they're like, what does it do? And you're like, oh, it just gives me the password. And they're like, sure. <laughs> and then, you know, sometimes they go down. Um, one of the other things I thought was hugely important that I didn't realize till later was the team member skill matrix. Being able to accurately deconstruct every member of the team and every piece of their skill set so that you could put the right human on the right thing. And then if you need to start training your team more, it's not just like, oh, I want to go to the Sands training because I want to blow John Strand. No. He's cute, but no. You, you want to be like, okay, you're already good at that stuff. I want you to do this to fill the gap. And he's like, I got a gap to fill. No, uh, that's that's going <laughs> to... Anyway, all right, defensive coverage. All right, so now we have all this process. We have all these procedures. We have a good idea of what our skills are and everything else. Now we need to start figuring out what our baseline is going to be. Our baseline is all about our coverage assessment, right? We need to start mapping each piece of the process and which tools and which products and which controls are supposed to protect us. Doesn't mean that they have yet. It just is a theoretical thing. We're going to tabletop exactly what we think it should do. Because this is going to be able to tell us what didn't work and what did work. Make sense? Okay. Like, you can say no and throw shit. Like, I'm super thick-skinned. Um. After we get that, we need to start figuring out the metrics. How are we going to get metrics from our testing, our TTPs? Well, we're going to make a scoring sheet. We have another one now on some of the new versions of what we're doing that actually determines a little bit more about response maturity, um, which is great because when the defenders have a hissy fit and leave, I'm like, that's not very mature, you know, zero. Um, and then they have their own sheet on us, which is attacker maturity, which is always a zero. Um, cause they're like, we don't like the way that you said that zero. <laughs> it's a good metrics to manage my team though. Um, all right. So we want detection maturity. We don't want to be too aggressive on them. Right. So from you have nothing to, you could find something if you really dig to it to yes, you have it, but nothing alerts me to, okay. It alerts me, but it's just not really good at it. It's a lot of noise that I mute to, okay. I have a really good sense of reliability in these alerts and both the same thing in protection side right take those we start taking our ttps 
and we start grading them. We say, okay, like LSAS, right? I'm going to just recover, hash recovery. General topic, there's a bunch of different ways to do hash recovery, right? So I want to start iterating all of the different ways I can do hash recovery and start grading. How, how good are we at detecting it? We might have some good controls in place detecting it, but we suck at protecting against it because nothing has actually functionally gone out there and stopped those things from happening. So we get a good idea of exactly how we're doing and where we're at. Now, this really important comment of last test date, that one's important to me because, you know, Benjamin Depley is going to drop some new shit as soon as they figure out how to protect it. And then Mimi Katz is going to be able to do some other amazing gangster shit that you've never heard of and just be like, oh yeah, hit the F switch and it just fucking takes everything. You know, just, or the like take all or whatever, right? And so we need to understand how long it's been since we tested it because a lot of these things are going to decay over time very, very quickly. And some of them are going to take forever. Some of them are like a single binary control that's not going to change unless there's a fundamental change in the operating system. And then there's other stuff that's going to rapidly get innovated around. So we want to make sure the accuracy of our score is good. Tim, one of the guys on our team, took a lot of this stuff that we were doing. Um, and Tim, coming from an awesome collegiate and research background, said, okay, well, now that we have all these scores, right, we can start taking and modeling all of the different possible routes that go through here. We could take this chart that we had before that we were using our unit testing and grading the whole environment, and we could say, start here. And then go to all of these places, and then all of these, and all of these, and all of these, and all of these. Give me 100 million simulations of each one of these going into any one of the things that we've tested. Right? That's a, I mean, he cranked it out in a fucking Excel spreadsheet. But what we found out after that was he could predict exactly what the attack path was gonna be. Because we did some unit testing and we were able to accurately portray what the environment was. Now, we all know about unit testing, right? Um, unit testing is unit testing. And it looks really, really good when you're doing it. And you can do a whole bunch of predictions on it. But when you sail the boat on the water, it might just fucking blow up. So we decided we would take that into account and say, all right, we have to actually add the adversary into it. So not only are we just testing the units, we now got to put some skill in it. And then we got to have the skill go do work. So maybe somebody was really, really good. So we can now start classifying. Was attack string one more advanced than attack string 750? Right? And weight all of those inversely to themselves so that we could get an idea of if a expert or novice practitioner was doing these things, how likely would it be that they were going to attack us? Maybe, maybe we have 25 different attacks that were going to work. We know that. Probabilistically, they're going to work. But six of those could be done by any script kitty on the fucking planet. We can prioritize needing to test those if we only have six things to test. Right? So we need to be able to add adversarial scoring into that. We can be able to take that, say, all right, here's my accounts. Here's how many were detected. Here's where protected. And we can say it's going to take this level of adversary to really do things. What can I do for you? You want to come up? Hang out? Sit on my lap? What's a Sprite? Mm. Okay. Now that we've done that, we've weighted the possibility of attack. We've understood all of the different attack paths that can happen. Now we want to actually simulate the attack. Okay? So... We're not, we're going to, we're going to actually go, you know, put the Titanic on the water and go run it around. This is the stuff you want your red team doing when you're running a campaign, not just a lick a finger, put it in the air, hope that, you know, this one shot that I work, beat it down, measure it all the time. We want to say, here's all the ones that we're pretty sure are going to work and go do them because it might not work the way that I thought it was going to work. It might, the math for some reason might blow up. So we want it to actually go through that. We want our defenders to see what it's like to go through that particular attack chain. Because maybe instead of the controls catching it, maybe instead of 
things protecting against that maybe our standard response program doesn't see it, but because we've done it once before, the defender just gets that feeling and sees the start of it and goes, ooh, I think I need to look at that. I feel like I've looked at something like that before and goes down the rabbit hole. And that's, that's the moment that we get to transcend all of the controls that we have. All right, defender measurement. We don't want to just measure the red team and how the red team is doing, right? That's just stuffing their nose and shit. And we're the ones who like shit on their lawn and then stuff. They're like, no shit on the lawn. Like I did it. Sorry. Um, sorry, not sorry. I married a Canadian. I'm starting the whole sorry thing. I, I'm sorry. God damn it. I did it again. All right. Defensive measurement. We want to be able to watch what defenders are doing and understand how proficient they are. Not just, did you get the attack? Did you detect the attack? I don't really care about that stuff. I want to know how fast, how much coverage you had. If we had 20 shells, did you catch six? Did you catch 20? Did you catch 25 and the other ones have nothing to do with me? Like, I need to know those levels of variance. I can't just say, oh, yeah, we got it. We caught you. Bullshit. You can fucking catch anything. Well, we saw this packet. We saw this. And we know that these things are bad. So we have your bad IP addresses. Be like, okay, find the other fucking 40 things. Click. Maybe we want to figure out how much of those things were automated versus how many of them were manual. If there's a really badass defender, good. I want them to be a badass. I want a metric to show that they, John Henry did it and dug the whole thing by themselves and ignored all of the automation that they had and really built it forward because those are the defenders we want writing some of the control sets for the future. Right? I don't know if you saw their talk, but it was, no, but a lot of the stuff that you were doing in it was really pushing exactly what a good defender should be doing and then wrapping those back into actually building the controls instead of going, oh yeah, we saw the thing. Like make it from manual to automated. And the more of that automation that exists, the better the environment gets. So this is one that Chris was doing in his environment, taking different search terms in order to look at what the defender was doing. Not looking for attackers, looking for when X defender logged into this box and how many of my machines did they catch, right? So we could start building the time of when the attack was, when the detection time was, how long did it take to get each one of those and what detection tool used to catch it, right? From those, we can template out all of the different attacks that are out there. We can tell you exactly how your defenders are going to respond because we've tested them doing it. Make halfway sense? Cool. All right. The dashboard, which people love to see. This is another brainchild of Tim, which is just fucking beautiful. Um, so here, right? These are these general areas of attack, whether it's discovery, whether it's defense evasion or execution or CNC or privilege escalation, I can now start using this as a heads up display of saying, look, my C2, I only catch 6% of. Maybe instead of buying the, you know, APT threat pro intelligence feed for 200 fucking grand, maybe I should actually do some better C2 detection because I can prove that we need it. Right? Maybe, maybe we need to look at the tools that we're using and say, uh, this tool doesn't catch a whole lot. I think we could replace it with something else, not only save some money, be more effective. Right? And then we could start doing our simulations. When we were talking about going through here and simulating all of the different pieces of this and doing all the iterations against it, we we're actually able to find where the bad stuff was going to come from way before we've ever tested it, way before an attacker's ever done it. The big thing that I wanted to get to that we're working on really hard is to say every company, when you're done with a test, right? They go, how do I fix it? And then as soon as you tell them how to fix it, they go, well, what product or like magic secret fat pill do I buy to be skinny again? Okay. We can measure these things for them. First, let's just say this purple area is the total protection detection response. If in a perfect world, I ran an attack, this is you being able to see, 
block and respond every single thing that I do from the moment I get on the network doing something or externally or talk to the host to the moment I'm totally eradicated and I'm done with my exercise, right? This, this is the potential. Remember how we were scoring things and saying, oh yeah, FireEye should catch this. And well, yeah, it, it, don't let their marketing team do it because they'll just be like 100%. Um, but, but, but this is the potential, what we think should have been caught by our controls. And then this is the actual, this is when we tested it, what happened that day. Maybe the defender was having a shitty day. Maybe I did some really cool ninja shit that no one's ever seen anymore. Maybe one of the loggers was down, right? There's all these variants, but we want to know what the actual difference is between the potential. Because if we can do that, we can figure out if there's an execution gap or if there's a coverage gap. Now, what happens in this scenario if we do something and the answer is go buy more shit? What happens? This potential goes up to here, and then this gap gets worse. We've actually proved to them on paper in a graph, which means more than anything. <laughs> fucking, as soon as you put it in a graph, it's real. But it's, it's now in a graph form showing that execution gap has grown. Your security program has gotten worse because you bought shit. I have been trying to make this fucking grab my whole life. My whole life. And I think we're getting there. So I have like two and a half minutes left, right? Sure. The future of this um, and what we're doing has got me really excited about work again. Um, we're trying to do all sorts of stuff with it because I figure now if we could start modeling what the most likely attacks are, we could apply the same thing to defenses. We could say, what are all the defense TTPs? And then simulate all of defender techniques and then grade how good we are at defending. It will give instant feedback to the red team to say, this is the stuff you need to learn how to do because this is the stuff we're not good at doing. So we have a full congruent loop between the two teams, right? Then... We could say, here's the most likely things the blue team isn't going to catch or is going to catch versus the red team is or isn't going to succeed at. Okay? Awesome shit. If we can get both of those automated, we can make both of those two computing platforms fight each other. If we can make both of them fight each other, we're going to get standard output on both sides, which is feedback of how well the attacker and how well the defender is doing. If we can in turn take all of those results and say what you are doing good and bad, that means this automated defense side could start kicking out rules of the way that we're going to get attacked in the future before we get attacked. Does that seem real? Oh, yeah. Mm, yeah. We could also do some other fun stuff that I'm not going to really go into, but... Uh, I put all of that out there not to say that I've done it or Tim's done it or, or we've done it or, or that, you know, MITRE or whatever else has. I put it out there to try and get people thinking about ways that we can improve the security of environments without causing debt, without using vulnerability and exploitation as our crutch, without using obfuscation and trickery as the way that we're cool. I want to try and see how we can work together as a team with a common goal of protecting the company, when my skills are offensive and somebody's skills are defensive, we're still working for the same company. We're still working for the same team. And if we measure it, all of the stuff that we could do can grow. So I invite anyone to call bullshit, to help, to throw shit at us, to, to make improvements, to scrap it, steal it, and do it better. Um, I just, I just, I want some type of change to occur. And this is the most recent iteration of me trying to make shit change. Um, that's it. Any questions or stuff or get off the stage? Thank you.